This video is going to be used for three purposes. Firstly, we're going to have a look at what this fire brigade strike team does uh, when it's about to be overrun. Uh, secondly, we'll also use it as part of the low flying in the wires and hazards environment to have a look at an aerial reconnaissance. But first, I want to draw your attention to this guy here. He seems to be the team leader. And you can see that he's looking to the right, which is uh, to the south. Uh, this team had been given an assignment to protect a house which is just to the left of this scene. I'll show you uh, in another um, few seconds. Um, the arrow now points to the tops of the trees. You can see at the beginning of this clip that the trees are quite still. But what's happened is that there is a southerly change, very common in New South Wales, that has come through. And it's come through 10 minutes early. So these guys are caught. So let's have a look at exactly where this is. We'll punch in the latitude and longitude into Google Earth and we'll find our way to the site of the overrun. So we'll punch it in there. It's in degrees decimal format. And once we get it in, we will be able to um, zoom into the area in question. Oh, I've made a slight error there. Now I've corrected that error and here we go. So the main road there, the east-west road, is Turpentine Road and you can see that the marker has um, landed on that property right on the junction of that north-south road and the east-west road. Um, I will I'll show you some key points there. So the area in question is uh, within the circle that I've just created. Uh, just where the curse is going, you'll see, be able to see a fire trail. So that fire trail there has been cut through the bush to allow uh, rural fire service assets to get into the, the heavily wooded areas. Um, now I've just created, or I've taken the historical imagery and made the, the most recent image. It's got a slight amount of cloud cover, but the actual image itself is quite sharp. Now using the terrain feature, the terrain function, we can see that the east-west road there is predominantly um, bounded to the north by farmland and to the south there by slightly rising ground, and it's all bushland. And we go further to the south, we can see that it falls away into a valley, which I think is a Suffolk Creek. Um, that's the name of the of the area there. So it's a heavily uh, wooded area. There's a lot of bushland. And the scene that we will be looking at more closely is the uh, little um, driveway just to the right of the cursor. Now, what we'll also do is we'll use this as, a, as an opportunity to have a look at doing a aerial reconnaissance for wires in the event that we're going to be doing some low flying. So I can see where the power lines are. We can see where the power poles are because you can see the, where the, uh, the shadows lie. So I'm going to connect each power pole that I can identify so we can see where the power lines are. Now, I can't see an intermediate one. It must be in the shadow of those trees next to that dam, but I can see one over to the right. And there's another, and there's another. You can see how the, the bush has been cleared to allow for those distribution lines to be erected. And you get you start to get the ability to um, to oh, how would you say it predict where they're going to where the power lines are going to go. So you can see where it's been cleared, and then you can see it's been cleared to the south, which is at the top of the screen. There's a power line, the power pole there. But if we have a look closely, there's a shadow right there. And if we go a bit further to the north, we should be able to find another pole. Yep, there's the pole right there. So let's join that keep going further north you can see how the bush has been cleared it's got to be another one there's another one and notice how in these uh, this uh, bushland area we are away from uh, built up areas we are away from properties the span between the poles is actually quite long uh, also noting that, that that terrain there just to the top of the picture is actually going downhill so you can actually have a span between poles that's a couple of hundred meters uh, long up to 400 meters long uh, there is the the entrance of to the fire trail so let's go into street view and you can see right there is the entrance to that fire trail looking uh, to the west along turpentine road again you can see to the right there's that far there's the building that the uh, brigade has been sent to protect 
and it's a nice looking little property there not too far from Wollongong and now we're looking towards the east along Turpentine Road um, on the corner of the North South Road and Turpentine Road you can see a structure let's look to the left again Oh, there's the fire trail, the opening of the fire trail onto the main road. Uh, now we're zooming out. You can see the shadows there of the power poles. Anyway, so that's the area in question. And you see the driveway that goes into the property and then the road. Now, what we will do is we'll go to the dash cam footage from the Dunmore Rural Fire Brigade to see what happens. Now bear in mind they have been sent to protect that house. They are, they are expecting a southerly change to occur. And we see the team leader there keeping a weather eye out. People are pretty relaxed. They're expecting the southerly change in about another 10 to 15 minutes. But look at the tops of the trees. You can see now the trees are starting to move and you can start to see the smoke. So the team leader has now told everyone, right, get in the trucks, we're getting out of here and we see a lot more uh, activity and people have a bit more urgency to them. Now noting that most of the volunteers, uh, most of these uh, firefighters are volunteers, predominantly older guys, um, so they don't really move that fast. And the in interesting thing is that when it comes to fire, people don't panic as they might in other emergencies until the fire is directly upon them. So they do have a sense of urgency, these guys, because they are aware of what overruns do. And now you can see that the sun is being blacked out by the, the smoke. So the, uh, the f I think that's a Ford Ranger, has um, backed up along the road. And the uh, first truck is departing. Now, the truck from where the image has been taken, the dash cam, for whatever reason, has not moved. Maybe they were waiting for one of their members to come through. Uh, there's a, a vehicle driving, it looks like a civilian vehicle, but now the fire has uh, hit Turpentine Road and it's about to to cross over the road and you watch the ember attack. Um, look at the grass directly in front of the, the dash cam. Once you see the uh, embers coming across, you'll see how quickly they ignite the, the grass. And... Uh, the fire as it comes through makes its own microclimate, a lot of wind, and you can see how how harsh the winds are, 100 kilometers an hour. There's the ember attack, real firestorm, and watch the grass directly in front of the dash cam. See, it's just erupted into flames there. Um, this has all happened in the space of about uh, 1 minute and 45 seconds from the beginning of the clip. Now, uh, if you look to the left and to the right, you can see how the, the truck in which the dash cam is fitted uh, has used its self-protection system and it's, um, it's uh, sending out uh, jets of water and also showering itself with water. You can see the water there on the windscreen, just protecting the truck and protecting the op occupants. It's great devices uh, to save our firefighters. And now the main flashover has occurred, the overrun. I have no idea what happened to that property, but looking at satellite pictures, um, more recent satellite pictures, uh, probably look like, looks like it's intact. So it was probably, probably spared by this overrun, uh, noting that there were not too many trees directly adjacent to the property. And now the, uh, the truck has turned off its self-protection device you can see the the blue and red flashes from their lights and the main part of the wind has died down all the flames and there we go in less than two minutes that overrun and as we come to the end of this clip uh, ipass australia would like to pay its respects and acknowledge the sacrifices that uh, men and women who put on a uniform as professionals or volunteers and put themselves in harm's way for their community or for their country. I like to pay my respects to, to them and the sacrifices that they make and also to the families that love and support them. Thank you for your service.